Hello, I'm here to tell you a story. A very important story. So you better pay attention. <clears throat> there are many times in history in which the diabolical have been caught in the act of a malicious deed. Times in which the most malevolent of men were to almost evade persecution entirely for their most heinous acts. We have seen this with scandals such as Watergate, Gamergate, Pizzagate, and even, my favorite, Gategate. As outraged the public may have been during these detestable scandals, this would pale in comparison to the heart-shattering treachery that the users of iFunny would feel on November 2020. This is the story of Freddy Gate. In the early days of iFunny, the majority of the user base had a very simplistic grind set to post your hilarious memes and pray you get featured. For those unaware, getting featured means having your meme make it to the front page of the app, where you would get more likes and republishes. Cookie cutter and service level memes were commonplace during the early to mid 2010s. Many users would nab whatever meme they found off Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, Reddit, or 4chan and post it to iFunny to achieve getting their account featured. Putting in the extra effort to create your own meme simply wasn't worth the time for most of the user base. I mean, why bother when you could just steal memes from other corners of the web? So making your own high effort meme was just an outlandish idea. Until on December 29th, 2015, an iFunny user by the name of Tech Junkie would make this meta-breaking meme. Hmm. What's your name? Freddie Jones. Hmm, Freddie Jones. Shut up! <laughs> it was incredible. Every aspect of the post was so perfect, ranging from the commenter's name, the profile picture, the scene tying in so well. The Jack of Blackness. Have you seen the new FNAF trailer? And most importantly of all, the fact that this was solely meant for iFunny alone. Everything about this meme was sublime, and all of iFunny treasured it. A monumental meme reaching over millions of views and over hundreds of thousands of likes which is record-breaking levels for iFunny standards. For many years, it became the prized sacred gem for the app, being revisited by many as a relic in a museum for the next four years. Fast forward, and we are going to diverge our course a bit, so bear with me here. In 2019, a group of iFunnyers claimed to have discovered a backdoor into looking at other iFunny users' alternative accounts. Using the website known as altchive.mobi and punching in an iFunnier's account name, you can pull up a list of all the previous alternative accounts that they use on the app. How this is actually done, I have no clue, as I am unable to access the website as it seems to be down. Going to the owners of the Altchive's Twitter handle shows a history of struggling back and forth, trying to bring the servers online, until eventually they made this last update on July 25th, 2021. The website Archive has remained dark ever since. However, back in October of 2020, when the site still had traffic, many iFunnyers rushed to see the private alt accounts of many popular iFunny users. Though a good chunk of iFunnyers claim illegitimacy of the site stating that the alt accounts are not theirs, or that the actual alt accounts don't appear on the site at all. So, how does this tie in with Freddie Jones? Well, iFunnyers using the Archive website discovered a dark and terrible revelation. Freddie Jones was staged. <laughs> Going back to this post made by Tech Junkie in December 23rd, 2015, you could have found the original comment made by Freddie Jones. Emphasis on could have, as the original comment is now gone. Meaning that Tech Junkie made an alternate account by the name of Freddie Jones to comment to himself, you aren't even funny then screenshotting that comment and using the scene from School of Rock to make it into the perfect meme. The whole thing was a sham. Freddie Jones is Tech Junkie. Okay, why the hell did you even do that? A scandal that shook all of iFunny to its very core. Countless of iFunnyers were outraged by the leak. A tumultuous uprising occurred, as iFunny users briskly swept onto the original Freddie Jones meme, unleashing their torrent of outcry and anguish. Liar. Fraud. Imposter, they exclaimed. Numerous memes about the scandal spread like wildfire throughout the app. The most reprehensible act had just occurred, and it must be paid in blood. It wasn't just the original post that people demeaned and insulted Tech Junkie on. Just about every post after Freddie Jones on Tech Junkie's account had been berated with slander by many iFunnyers. It seemed the outrage was never ending. 
Here are just a couple more responses in lieu of this tragedy. So, did Tech Junkie ever make a response to this scandal? On two separate posts, Tech Junkie would respond to two comments on the matter. When asked simply why, Tech Junkie explains that it was a joke that had been stirring in his head for a while, and that he couldn't just wait for the opportunity for another iPhone ear with the username of Freddie Jones to comment, so he had to just do it himself. On another reply comment, Tech Junkie makes a stand that he never denies the Freddie Jones fraud coming to light. It was just so long ago that it seemed like a frivolous, harmless meme. When asked the question how, he claims he did it using an old iPod. Tech Junkie now spends the rest of his days lurking the app, powering through the ceaseless weight of hatred and ostracization looming over him. Unfortunately, this tragic tale only seems to get worse, as the actor of Freddie Jones, Kevin Clark, in the film of School of Rock, sadly passed away on May 27, 2021, in an accident. As for the original post, it is still up on iFunny. To this day, a permanent engraving of all the heartbroken iFunnyers whose bitter comments still remain. Now, I don't think that Tech Junkie deserved all this backlash and hate for creating a meme he only thought was just a joke. If there was even ever a lesson to this tale, just know that iFunny does not forget.